My name is Rashid Khan. I work out of the Westward office. Welcome to the networking track. Um, I'm supposed to open the track. I don't know what that means. So I just created this slide saying, welcome to the networking track. So if somebody asks you, did Rajit open the track, please say yes, Rajit opened the track. That's all I'm going to say. But talking about the track on seriousness, there, if you click the networking icon, there are a whole bunch of talks and workshops today. This is an eye chart. Oh, it comes out pretty cool. So there's a whole bunch. I'm just starting it like a tap dance in the beginning. And then uh, there are a whole bunch of people who are going to just be in this room uh, until like 3. And then we have, at 3, we have the workshop and um, Wi-Fi in parallel sessions. But if you are interested in networking and want to just stick around in a nice, warm room next to coffee and bathrooms, this is a good choice. <laughs> OK, with that said, so not fake news, development and QE collaboration is possible. Um, how many people who are not from United States get this not fake news reference? Oh, OK. Oh, okay. So our president has permeated across the globe, so OK. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, so as I said, my name is Raj Khan. I, this slide deck is in collaboration with many people. It would have been ironic if I did not collaborate with QE on the slide deck that I was going to talk collaboration on. Anywho, so I put my email address off over there as well because I realized it's not on the slide deck. It was too late. So if you have questions, feel free to ask me afterwards. So what I mean by collaboration is like people take it for granted, but I wanted to just start by showing what usually happens. This is a game called um, Fireball Tennis. No, it's not very common in the United States, but I just found this video and it served the purpose. So this guy just picks up a flaming tennis ball and lobs it uh, across. So imagine the first guy is development. He finds this hot new feature. And then over the net, he just lobs it. And the other, uh, let's imagine the other side is QE. And like, nah, I don't know. I can't test this back. And then, no, 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 you have to test this. Ooh. And this is part of the feature. So this is a problem that sometimes happens. Not that it happens in Red Hat at all, but I'm just saying I've heard this happens sometimes. Or the other scenario is this, that development just lobs the feature over the wall. Boom. It hits QE on the head. Uh, for, for the people who are not Red Hatters, we call our quality assurance QE quality excellence. Yes, okay. <laughs> Wanted to make sure. It's too early in the morning. The other thing is, oh, I'm a developer. I don't do testing. I swear to God, there was a person who worked for me in another company. He did quote that to me. I'm a developer. I don't do testing. Okay, how do you know your code is working? It's QE's job. I was very shocked. Um, the company still exists, but I left them. <laughs> I don't do QE. It's QE's job. So that. Believe it or not, it does still happen. And waterfall models and all kinds of crap still happen. So these are, I just wanted to start with the level set. And I'll be honest with you, before I started this effort, a little bit of this was going on even in Red Hat. It's not like we are all perfect. So <coughs> this was happening even in here. But we took a lot of journey. We'll talk about that. So what does it result this result in? Obviously, it results in failure. If you just lob it over the wall, Kiwi has no idea, or throw them a ball of hot feature, or what you think is hot, it results in absolute failure. So enough of the videos now. Let's get to the serious stuff. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> just when I said serious stuff. So the front guy, obviously, is with the beard and fat. That's me. And then now what we have achieved is we have achieved, uh, with our Kiwi working after a long time, that we do. Um, have the boat running in sequence and we are achieving great results. So with that said, yes, this is the last one. Okay. So how did we do that? If you are here to learn something earth shattering, sorry to disappoint you, I don't have anything earth shattering or as I call it rocket surgery to tell you. Again, how many people get the reference that that's not a typo? <laughs> it's okay. So because somebody pointed out, Rashid, that you're, you have a typo on the slide. So uh, how did we do that? Just level set. I don't have any earth shattering stuff, but we have a whole bunch of small stuff that we did. 
And it has a journey, it took a long time to get here, I would say about five-ish years. So it's a long duration and a lot of effort and energy. Well, four-ish. So we have been reaping the benefits for about two years now, but three, four years. So the fundamental thing is openness and trust. I know it's easier to say than, I'll show you what I mean by that, but the two fundamental things that I would summarize this with collaboration with QE is openness and trust. We'll come back to it in a second. So let's talk about some practical things that we did. I just want to share with you some practical things we did. These are like the back of, uh, we all know it in our team, in my team at least, but I just wanted to share because they might not be obvious. So we took the lead in doing our own unit testing and we created this framework called tier zero testing, we call it LNST, but other kinds of automated testing that we developed ourselves and we developed with QE. So what does that mean? So earlier, before we started this effort, somebody merged a patch in the Y stream or our main line, main branch. It stayed embedded for eight months. And then towards the end of the cycle when QE started testing it, it was a complete disaster and the performance was gone to, I don't want to say shit, but performance was gone to, <laughs> gone down the drain. And, uh, but the problem, so I, uh, we found the problem, this was this patch, eight months ago it was merged in, and I said, can we revert it? And the answer was no. Why? Because for eight months, other patch it had uh, uh, cascaded on top of it, and now we could not revert it. It's like eight months of development on top of it. So it was like a slap in the face for me and saying, look, this has to stop. This is kind of wrong. So now we developed a system in which whatever we merge in, even before it goes to our main line or Y stream as we call it, it's tested. It's tested very thoroughly. And it's tested for regression detection, it's tested for any kind of, it doesn't cover everything, but at least it covers the basic connections and the basic stuff that's supposed to be working. And then if there's a problem, it causes a problem, even let's say 5% degradation, then we just hold the horses, hold on a second, there's best, worst case two weeks worth of patches, we quickly isolate which patch and we stop the presses and say, okay, we have to either revert this out, take this out and continue or do this. So bugs are squished in days and this reduced the bugs going into QE by a tremendous amount. So now when QE starts their testing, uh, they, they don't have day one stop the presses kind of bugs because we already tested them. So that's pretty cool. So there are some quotes that I've sprinkled in the presentation. I'm not going to say them, but if you see something in blue on the side or something, that's an exact quote that I copy pasted from some QE members who looked at my slides. So CI is really revealing bugs even before the code is merged. This is a merit badge for me. This quote is what I would like to make a laminated thing and hang around my neck all the time because this is exactly what I was trying to achieve, what our team was trying to achieve when we started this effort. And unsolicited, I got this quote from one of the QE person that I really uh, respect. And when I showed him my slides, hey, this is what I'm gonna show. In reply, he sent me this quote on his own. So I wanted to just to ask for that also. That CI is really showing bugs before even the code is merged. Awesome. Okay, what else did we do? We created a qualification process for hardware certification. So again, it sounds like obvious, bro, oh, you didn't have that. Yes, sorry, we didn't have that. But what we did was we, one of our developers in our team, developed some tests for his own testing that he's not causing any regressions. And it was so thorough and so good and so fast and so automated that we worked with QE QE created an automated framework around it, and now we have a whole bunch of tests that we give our, to our partners, even, so let's say a partner next knocks on the door saying, hey, we have this hot new car and a hot new driver, we want it to be part of the Red Hat software stack. Earlier, we used to bring them in, merge, patch, code is done, send it to QE, QE finds issues, and then problem starts. Now what we do is, hold on guys, we absolutely want your car to come in. We love you, we are awesome. But here's a whole bunch of automated tests that you don't need a traffic generator for, you don't need any external equipment for, you don't need any expenses piece of equipment. All you need to do is 
one or two, one senior call QE person and a junior QE person can run these tests on your card, on your driver, on your own, and output is a result, which is a spreadsheet, which has green and red lights, like pass, fail, pass, fail. And when you have the whole spreadsheet green, please bring it in and we will integrate the hardware in, inside. And believe me, uh, trust me, it has been just phenomenal. I thought that the hardware vendors will be like, oh my God, what do you mean? This is extra gate. This is so difficult for us. You know, we will go to your competitor. They will put it in. But they also said, okay, sure, these tests, the other thing was, oh, these tests are unfair. We're not going to do it. This doesn't bring the best qualities of our hardware. Nothing like that happened. Nothing, absolutely nothing like that happened. They said, sure. We'll run them. How much time we have? We said about three weeks or so whatever time you need. You will be part of the next release cycle. They said, fine. We started a dialogue with them. Trust me, they found bugs that they were surprised with. So it, instead of having everybody come in and then code is merged in and then now is the problem, we said, please run this on your own, in your own environment. We'll help you set up the environment if needed. And then we do it. Wow, time flies. I talk a lot. So the other thing we did was, so this was development taking the lead. The other side was QE take the lead sometimes. And QE developed this network manager testing, which is super automatic. It runs all the time. It runs in the background. And it covers 90% of the code. The LNST that I talked about also covers a large amount of uh, code. It doesn't cover every, everything, but it covers a lot also. The other thing, another thing we do is we ask you to run, do dry runs before working in the code. So if you change the TCP stack in fundamental ways, sometimes we have to because there's a lot of innovation upstream and we bring it in. Our customers and partners are demanding it. We bring it in, we do our own testing, but then we ask you, can you please run your qualification test or your full test cycle on this code that we are about to bring in before it's part of the wide stream. And that works out very well also. So it gives QE the preview, and there is no flaming tennis balls. We look at their test plans, and it works out quite well. We start a dialogue. They tell us the deltas between release to release. And we do a thorough, thorough um, investigation slash feedback loop on the test plans. And we say, oh, this maybe you need to do this a little bit more. You need to do this a little bit less. And it works out very well. Again, a direct quote. I would really like to stress out that Devel collaboration and willingness to help any time. And I didn't even change the font. This is the exact quote with that font in there, which is awesome. This is a merit badge for me or our team. Um, Devel does not surprise QE with features. So we have a major release coming out, well, eight. Some of the features were developed upstream, some of the features were developed, many of the features were developed by non-Red Hackers. But what we did was we said we did an audit of the whole release, what we are bringing in from upstream, and we created an MVP list, or most important to test, or etc. and we told QE, hey QE, please watch out, this is the new stuff coming in. A lot of it is not touched by us, but it will be part of the release. Please make sure your test plans and everything is prepared for that. So again, not like lobbing it over the wall and go figure it out, QE, all the man pages are upstream. No, we don't do that. We say, okay, hold on, it's, we are in this together, let's work it out together. Tech preview. Sometimes we don't know all the answers. We don't know how a feature is going to be used. We have no idea how it's going to be accepted. So we use the tech preview to put things in part mode, like, okay, this is part of our release, but we are not going to fully support it. We have customers testing it, uh, partners testing it. And then once, so there are two aspects to it. Putting in tech preview is pretty cool and everybody agrees, QE understands that. But what we did was we collaborate with QE to say, hey, are you, we are going to now take this out of tech preview mode also. That, that has a lot of implications on QE because they have to now test it much, much thoroughly because it's a supported feature. So we have a dialogue, we discuss it together and we figure it out. Boss, if I started at 9.30, then I have some time. Okay, okay, okay. I, <laughs> your uh, reminder threw me off a little bit, but I have some time. Okay. So now, so this was all more of a technical stuff that we did. We developed scripts, we developed relationships, 
Now we are going to talk a little bit about the extended structure between QE and us. Um, bottom line is mutual respect and trust. So the, at the lower right of my next few slides, you'll see this whole theme of mutual respect and trust. So we, we provide career paths for QE team members. We have about, from my count, four or five previous QE team members who are part of our development team now. Sometimes they reach their limit at QE and they're doing a really good job and they understand the code and they understand scripting, they're doing very well. But there's not much that they are enjoying in QE anymore. There's not a challenge. So the QE manager reaches out to me saying, hey, I have this person, he's a little bit bored now. Would you mind? We talk to them. They like us, we like them. They move to our team. We give them a rec, they hire another QE person. Awesome, works out every single time. Every single person who has moved to QE from development has been a superstar, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. That number three is wrong. Now that I do a mental audit, it's much more than three. I think it's five. Hardware sharing. So we, we put in the CapEx and OpEx and whatever we need to. We create our own lab, but it's not like my lab. No, no, no. <laughs> So it's, sort of, it's our lab, we have done our testing, we want it, we want to use it, we will use it all the time. And if the QE manager knocks on my door and says, hey Rashid, we don't have the same equipment or we don't have uh, the test generator or whatever, do you mind sharing? We say, absolutely, please do. I'll give you a practical example. We bought a cheap traffic generator and there was an overhead cost of a chassis. So you have to buy a chassis, then you have to buy the cards. We told QE, saying, okay, how about we absorb the cost of the chassis and the first card, and we will share with you, you integrate it into your test plans, and then from there on, you can just punch in your cards in that chassis, and you don't have to worry about the, the cost of the overhead of the chassis or the signaling and etc. Again, sounds like, why didn't you do it before? But a lot of times it doesn't happen, that's why I'm emphasizing it. So we share hardware as much as we can. And sometimes they qualify something and say, Rashid, we found this awesome deal in Beijing. It's really cool. We're going to put it in Beijing. The latency is not that bad. The packets can come all the way to uh, westward. Now that if the car is no longer part of IT, I can say the packets are coming from Beijing to our lab in westward. Otherwise, he would have closed it <laughs> right from his phone. So that's pretty cool. And then we interview each other's candidates. Because again, mutual trust and respect. We talk to each other, say, so my counterpart calls me, I call her and say, hey, do you mind we talk to each other? <coughs> we even offered money to hire people. Don't tell my boss, but she's sitting right there. But, <laughs> so yeah, but I, we offered. They didn't, never took it. But again, mutual trust and respect, right? So okay, you need to hire someone, you are short by whatever, 10,000 CZK, sure. I'll borrow, you can borrow from me, you can replenish, etc. So we work jointly. This is not common. <laughs> Gave advice to each other for people management, team management, project management, all the time. In the end, hugs and kisses. Mutual respect and trust and hugs and kisses. So I know I rushed a little bit. We have five minutes left, so that's good. And that should be plenty to answer questions if you, anybody has any. This was high level. I did not want to start with like a JavaScript in the first day, in the first session, with snowy day. So it was high level with, just to get the juices flowing for you. Questions? Other, other things which were curious that I didn't explain well? Yes? So, Very good question. So five years ago is my example of that eight months ago, the patch went in. That's when I realized we have to do it. We, it's really, oh, sorry. The question from Dimitri is, I said in my presentation that we started this five years ago and it took many, many steps. And Dimitri asked, can I highlight some of those steps? Good question. So five years ago was the point when I realized that no, 
we have to test sooner before we can wait for QE to get it. So what we did was we dedicated, first of all, we dedicated people to start our own voice stream doing testing or LNSC test. So we had some people who were in, I don't remember, I think we hired people or we bought, got some people from QE into our team who started working full time to develop this basic regression detection tester for us. And we collaborated with many different parts of QE and other teams to develop the infrastructure that does run a test, compares the results, stores the results, stores the configuration of everything, makes it repeatable, finds the test which failed, creates a script just for the test that's failed and gives it to the developer. So we start now, this is the end result, but we started that. And it's slowly, slowly now is so robust that now developers can request an LNST test even before they merge. We test them before things go into widescreen. We created our own sub maintainership. But the key things were we invested in people and a small team dedicated for that. And we invested in hardware that is dedicated for that. And we create, turned it into a gate. So those were, well, once it was ready and mature and we had trust, I mean, we had understanding of the whole development team that, yeah, it's working, we create, turned it into a gate. So now to use Red Hat terms, we created a sub-maintainer branch for networking. JD is the maintainer for that. He collects all the patches before going to Vice He collects all the patches, creates a sub-build, puts it in this testing. If it's all green, he merges it to Vice stream. If it's not green, he stops the presses, calls Rashid, saying, Rashid, your patch broke to ABC. Do you want to revert or do you want to fix? If you want to fix, you have a couple of days. So that was step one that we dedicated people for this, and they're still dedicated, and they keep on enhancing, and keep on expanding the coverage of that test. And now they're doing like advanced stuff like OBS, DPDK, SCTP, it's really, it's really robust now. So the, I think the whole cycle now takes one day to complete on four machines. And we are thinking of parallelizing it, or my thought was, even if it takes a weekend, like we started on a Friday, and Monday morning, we have the report, still it's fine. So I just found out it takes a day, still okay. We can run it on the weekend. But we have dedicated machines. So dedicated people, dedicated machines, slowly building it. But about three years ago, it was already showing its fruits, first fruits. And now it's just, the orchard is growing. What about buy-in and mind-shape? <laughs> Yes, what about uh, Dimitri's question? What about buy in and mind shift? Um, I'll be honest with you, I am quite lucky that on the QE side and on our development side, I in Red Hat did not have a team member who said, I am a developer, I don't test. There was no dialogues like that, first of all. Yes, there were some people who said, oh, we rely on upstream testing and upstream robustness, etc. I had to slowly convince them that, okay, if you have a test script, and you have a test cycle, excellent. Please give it to us, and we will make it part of this testing suite so that it works upstream, downstream the same. What's the problem? A lot of times, to my utter surprise, it, what we thought was being tested upstream was not as robust as we thought. Somebody had sprinkled a few tests here and there, but it was not as robust as we needed. And then I kept telling people about this, my disastrous example that, hey guys, if we go with that model where we test at the end, eight months, we could not revert, remember that time? So we had to use a crisis to do the mind shift. As Ram Emanuel said and other people said, crisis is a very, crisis is a terrible thing to waste. So yes, I did use a crisis and I did not waste it. Awesome. Any, yes sir, sure. So developers in the QE organization are separate organizations this would be considered an anti-pattern in some circles. Can you speak to the advantages of having that separation versus the challenges? So Stuart is asking the QE and developer is uh, in the organizational structure. If you look at the org chart or whatever, it's all the way to C-level suite before they merge. And he asked me if I can list the advantages or disadvantages. I'm not going to list any advantages because I cannot think of it. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I think that the, 
what we did was we said, look, I called my counterpart and said, look, this is not working out for me. Do you mind if you collaborate? I saw an open arms on the other side. We didn't care who's reporting to whom. I, yes, i be honest with you. I did talk to Christian's boss, like my counterpart's boss, boss, boss's boss, and we developed a relationship, which is not like, you suck, no, you suck. We did not start with that. We did not start with blame game, we did not start with finger pointing. We started with, hey, let's make this better. Doesn't matter who's reporting to whom. What do you need? How can we help? Honestly, that's how I started it. And I'll, and I'll be honest with you, it was phenomenal. Once we start a conversation with, hey, there's a problem, how can we help work this together? On the other side was, yeah, there's a problem that's facing. Out of time. Okay, I'm here till Sunday. If you have any questions, I put my email. Let's talk more. Thank you very much.